Hi everyone, I'm going to be doing a Nagura progression today on behalf of uh, Jay who asked me to do this. Uh, I want to show you some of the, first of all I want to let you know that I've already done my bevel set on uh, the Nanawa Pro 1000. I know you guys are going to see a lot more bevel sets are done by Jay and some of the other guys so there's no, really, there's no reason for me to do it here. So we're going to start off from here. I want to show you some of the materials that I use. I use the electrical tape. I've got a jeweler's loop, which is good to have, but I highly recommend having a microscope, which gives you a much closer look up of your blade. Uh, I use a Sharpie. As you notice, I've marked the, the blade to make sure I'm actually hitting the edge of my blade while I'm doing my hone. Uh, it's most important to do that while you're doing your bevel set because it's going to be fine after that. I put a fresh piece of electrical tape on the spine to make sure I don't get any spine wear. Uh, you notice I also got the alcohol wipes which I use to wipe the remainder of the marquee off when I'm done. Uh, and we'll be using the Botan which if you look at it's I know stones are usually rate it by hardness but I try to translate it to something I understand a little bit better and that's about grit which is synthetics are made by this is uh, roughly the bow tie is the first stone it's between two and three uh, K as far as grit wise the second stone that you'll go to is the Margiro or Majiro uh, it's 5k roughly the third stone is Tenju and it's around 8K. And the final remainder stone is the Coma. And it's 10K plus. I wrote it on there to remind myself. I did the research. Anyhow, that, that's essentially what you're using. Uh, my base stone here is Akita. It's a five, a very, a five out of five. It's a very hard stone. So therefore, there will be no slurry mixing up from the base stone with my Nagura stone progressions these stones up here I just want it to be pure slurry from those stones I don't want that's why it's so important in my opinion to use a very hard base stone that way you don't get a mix of a grit from the base stone with your Nagura slurries all right well we're gonna take off and start doing this uh, I'm not the best this is the first video I've ever made so excuse me I'm not real good at it and I'm not gonna probably do too much talking because uh, it's kind of self-explanatory uh, about what we're going to do. Also, oh, I want to let you know I also use these microfiber towels to clean up with. Uh, they're real cheap on Amazon. I usually get them and rewash them until they're no good no more, but uh, I just continue to use them. They're, they're excellent for wiping down the stones and cleaning up any water mess and such. Uh, as well, like I said, uh, I've got a spray bottle over here. That's what we're going to be using for water. Uh, that's all I use is water just about most of the time. I mean, I know some people use water and soap or whatever ever other combinations, but most of the time I'm just doing strictly water. Uh, it works for me. All right, well, uh, I'm going to stop right here and get everything ready to go, and uh, we'll pick back up. Okay, folks, we're back. I'm about to uh, go ahead and put the uh, start off with the Botan. Uh, I don't have a proper stand, so I'm using this box. I hope it works for us, but uh, we'll just proceed from here. Basically, you just need to watch how I do this on the stone. So we're going to start uh, slurrying the bow tie on the stone right now. And pardon me for the shaking because this, this table is a little wobbly that I'm working on. I don't really have the best resources for doing video right at the moment. But I want to get this done. I said I'd do it, so I, keep, I try to keep my word when I say I'm going to do something. And I hopefully it'll uh, pay off and teach some of you other guys something about this. I was really impressed how well this combination works it does a tremendous job 
And if you can, I hope you can see here, we have a, a little white slurry building up from the botan. That's what we're looking for. And of course, that's gonna turn darker as we start taking metal off. All right, so we're, we're good to go with the botan now. So, and just move this around a little bit. I actually need to move myself around because the video needs to be able to be seen clearly. And I'm just gonna start. Now, I don't put a lot of pressure on this. I just take it nice and smoothly back and forth. I do like to hold my blade down just the way I do it, but I know other, other people have different ways of doing it. Some do it like that and like that, and some people do circles. Whatever you used to do, and it, there's no right and wrong way of doing it as long as you, you're just getting where you need to on the blade. Uh, and you can see that we're actually hitting the, the blade because we have knocked off some of the Sharpie on each side, as you can see. That's the main target. That means we're hitting the apex of the blade, and that's where we want to be doing it. So we can get a nice, sharp razor out of this deal. And you'll notice there's start, this, this uh, slurry is starting to turn gray. That means it's cutting metal. And we'll just keep going back and forth. I just do it until uh, I feel like everything's working just like I want it to. I don't know. I don't really count. I just continue to, to do it until I'm satisfied. And what I'll do at the end, I usually uh, will knock the slurry off and go straight, uh, just go a little bit water, just to knock up any burrs off on this on this stone. And that's I do that for each and every stone. Now I don't, a lot of people change their tape after every progression. I don't do that. I don't see any reason to do that unless your tape is worn down where it's not protecting the uh, bevel, I mean the, uh, the, the, the back he here, or the, uh, what I'm talking about, the, uh, well, you know what I mean. Anyhow, can't think straight. Just got up not long ago. Yeah, I'm trying to, uh, the spine. I'm trying to protect the spine. That's what I'm doing with the tape. And I know a lot of people that find that some people don't want to do, use the tape and some people do use the tape. It seems like more people are for it than against it, so I just kind of went with it. It's better to protect the spine from anywhere than, I mean, and one, one, one piece of tape is not going to do much harm as far as putting it out of alignment. As you can see, our, our slurry is getting uh, darker and darker because it's more metal mixing in. As you can see, we've got a full metal all the way across the blade, so we're touching everything. That's what we want to see. We want to make sure that we're actually hitting the very edge with the slurry and making this bigger sharp. I can already tell you it's getting really nice and sharp right now, which is already sharp off doing off the bevel, but we're, we're progressing on up. And like I said, I, I don't do any counts. Some people can do counts. I just don't do it. I just uh, go with it until I feel like I'm done. I think being one with the uh, metal and the stone, in my opinion, is the best part of doing this thing. It's just uh, such a nice feeling. You can just kind of feel when you're done. And you see, we're really, we've got really dark slurry now. So we've taken off a good bit of metal. All right. 
I'm going to start doing lighter strokes now. I was doing a little bit of pressure, but I, I'm, I'm actually not using any pressure at all now. Just the weight of the blade. That's the way I like to end it. I'm going to do probably about 30 strokes like this. And then I'm going to pursue, proceed on to the next stone. Always cleaning my area up in between. I don't want. I don't like to mix slurries, and I like to make sure I clean my knife or my razor off as well, so there's no sl uh, residual slurry on it either. All right, we're gonna stop right there. Oh, that feels great. All right, we're gonna take our microfiber cloth and uh, clean up the blade. I'm going to clean off the stone. Like I said, I usually go back over it with pure water just to, if there's any burrs or anything, just to take that off. Sometimes I do back strokes on it as well. There's all kinds of things you can do. All right. That feels good. All right, now we're going to re-wet the stone and build a slurry with the next. The next uh, Nagura, which is the uh, Majiro 5K, roughly 5K as far as grit, if he's going to compare it to a synthetic grit wise. Hardness level, I don't know what that comes out to, man. I, I still have a hard time trying to discern hardness, uh, what three out of five is, what two out of five, all that stuff. It, it makes more sense to me when it's talking about grit wise, like in synthetics. I, I just like to translate it that way because it, it makes a lot more sense to me. I understand what to expect out of that stone when it's when I, I understand the grit level. As you notice, it don't it doesn't take a whole lot of this stone. It doesn't wear down real fast, so these stones will last you for quite a while. I don't know how long they'll last, uh, but I've been buying extras just to make sure I never run out in my lifetime. The Botan and the Coma are starting to become very rare because the mines are closed and the available stock is, is starting to be depleted. So I have bought some extra Coma and Botan in, in recent times to make sure I always have some. <laughs> And if you uh, plan on doing this Nagira as well, you might want to think about that as well. All right, we got a really nice slurry build up here, and we're just going to continue on. And I'm not putting any pressure on this one. I, it's just the it's just the slurry and the blade and the the weight of the knife. As you see there, they all start off milky, but start turning gray as it starts taking metal. I believe they call this Makawa or something like that. That's what they call these kind of stones. It's a milky white slurry it comes off of them. And like I said, you can use your own technique. I mean, if you want to do it like that, that's that's up to you. Either either way works. Or you can do little round circles. Just make sure you're giving it equal amounts on each side. That's that's the big key to that. But for me, I just like to help guide it. I have arthritis, so. Somebody at the door. Okay. Yes, please. Pardon the interruption there. I guess probably getting a delivery. I might have to guess about that. Yeah, I'm, if I had a guess, I'd probably do about 
40 or 50 strokes back and forth with each stone. That's just a guess. Like I said, I, I just do it in, until I feel like I, I'm where I want to be with the edge. And the more you hone grazers, the, the more you can feel when you're really there where you want to be. I used to do counts. I just don't do it anymore because I'm more com I'm just comfortable with my skills at this point. I haven't been doing it a whole long time, but I've been very blessed to have some people explain some very critical points to me that got me going on my way. One thing was, I guess the most, if I had to say what the most three important things was, was it would have been always working with a uh, flat stone and use the, the Sharpie to make sure that I'm hitting right where I need to hit, thank you, uh, on the blade itself. And of course, uh, using the electrical tape to protect the, the, any from home, any homeware up here. So that's the three most important things I learned. And it was really important to make sure you have that going on. Flat stones are very important. If you don't have a flat stone, you'll never get a good good edge. Uh, as far as the people I give credit to, uh, Jay would be one, one of the, Jay Priest uh, and Jonathan Schultz have been the two most influential people for me. Jonathan Schultz is the one who, who first walked me through my first home that I was successful at. Yeah. After you pretty pretty much, I get here all the time, there's some over here on Andy Battery Floor. Okay, I'll get that. I'll get that. Yeah, by my right. Okay. Uh, excuse me again. All right. Yeah, I think we're good here. Uh, I'm going to pause the video here and we'll work on the next two stones here coming up shortly. I got to go take care of a couple of things real quick. All right, folks, I'm back. Uh, to do the the third stone, which will be the Tenzu, it's uh, uh, roughly equivalent to 8K on the grit level. And when I've already cleaned up my uh, surf my base stone to get ready for that before while I was off camera, so we're going to go ahead and slurry this up. When you're slurrying, you have to put a little pressure on the rock to get it to release some more so than others. I'm put, I am putting pressure down to get a good slurry on this. I like to make sure I have plenty of slurry to work with. I don't, I don't get stingy with it. go with the third Nagura progression Tenju and I love having a wide stone to work with too versus a thin stone it makes it so much easier because you can just take the blade up and down if you want to actually if you cock it to the side a little bit it works great I try to keep make sure I'm keeping my slurry on the stone and not going off the stone. Yeah, and, this, and she's getting real sharp about, about right now, I can tell you that much. We're probably at shave level if you want to stop here, but we're gonna continue to go the next stone will be in the coma. It's 10K plus, and so that's definitely a good finishing stone, right? Or a good finishing slurry. And we're. 
Now, what I found impressive about doing my gear is there was a couple of jump raises I had. I tried with J Nats, I tried with Arkansas and everything else. This I just could not get a a good sh uh, shaving edge on that on those razors. One was uh, high speed uh, German steel. The other one was something else. I don't remember. They're two different kind of metals, but when I tried everything else, the only thing that seemed that I could ever get a good blade on it was with the Nagura progression. So it was really impressive to me that uh, I could do so much with this. And I see what all the fuss is about now. Uh, it's really a good option. You can take one base stone and four slurry stones and uh, except for the bevel setter, uh, you can go all the way with it. It's really nice. It's an option. I like having options. I've got a ton of stones. Most of my stones, uh, my largest collections are Arkansas and JNATs. But I have just about every kind of stone known to man. <laughs> because I just wanted to try every stone. I don't know. It's part of the fetish of the hobby, I guess. Like I said, I do about 40 or 50 on each, on each slurry. You can see the slurry starting to get a little bit darker. We're taking a little bit of metal, but we're taking less and less the higher we go in progression, which that makes sense. Because we're just fine tuning the edge at this point. I can guarantee you it's sharp enough to cut hair. In fact, I'll demonstrate that. Now that yeah, we're we're there, uh, hopefully you can see this. I can just easily take that right off, no problem. I could probably pass a hanging hair test at this point as well, which I don't have any uh, hairs right now to do that, so I'm not going to do that. But trust me, when we get done here, there's no way this thing will not pass hanging hair test. <laughs> We're already cutting arm hair with ease. Yeah, as far as I do, I do tend to go slower than a lot of people do. A lot of people are going, zipping back and forth, back and forth. I can do that, but I just prefer to take my time with doing, doing this. I enjoy working on the stones. I'm not trying to rush it. But you can do it whichever way you feel like doing it. I just don't rush it. And I just enjoy doing, I enjoy being on the stones. It's, it's a, it's a, meditative thing for me something about being with a rock and a piece of metal and making a beautiful edge it's just a glorious thing something i never could do when i was younger i always wanted to be able to sharpen a knife and now i finally learned how to it's uh, a joy for me my goal is to be as good as anybody else at doing it my next challenge up after uh, these doing the straight razors will be doing uh, knives, which is a little bit different. I found that out that it doesn't work quite the same way, so I'll have to learn that next. But pretty well got the razors, the straight razors down. And I have done some tools as well, like. Uh, A Maddox, I put a sharper edge on it and stuff like that with some of my with some of my stones. 
chisels. I've done some sharpening of chisels. Those are not real hard. But I find knives to be a little bit more, much harder to do because I don't I don't quite get the angling on it yet. All right, you can see we have a nice gray slurry. I think we're about done with that. I'm gonna go ahead and clean off everything and take it to the final stone. I'm gonna also go ahead and take a pass on clear water just to, if there's any burrs on the, on the blade or anything, just knock them off. All right, just clean up the area. I always like to clean up the area and start from fresh when I do do a progression. I'll go to a new stone, in this case a new slurry stone. All right, we're on the final one. It's the coma. And this is, like I said, it's uh, grit wise, if you was going to, comparative grit wise, it's 10K plus. This is your final stone doing the Nagura progression. And like I told you, these are also becoming harder and harder to get. So uh, I'm trying to stock up on them while there's some available. Uh, I don't know if they'll ever open the mine back up or not. If they don't, then there's going to be a severe shortage. And I'm already saying the prices are very high on these guys as it is. And Botan's right behind. That mine's closed and the... And the it's starting to get less and less supply of that as well. So I'm, I'm really stocking up on Botan and Coma. There's plenty of Margiro and uh, Tenju. So that's not a concern at the moment. All right, I think we're good there. And now these these razors I use, I, I, I buy these from a Chinese seller, uh, but they're not your typical Chinese blade. They don't. I know they don't make these blades themselves. These these the blades on them are really good quality. I don't know where they get them from, but uh, I buy them in, in bulk to give myself something to do. These come in six eighths. And they're actually is good enough or people should buy them <laughs> if they had an opportunity to. They're, they're really good. They're better than the uh, gold dollar blades, I'll tell you that much. I mean, not saying the gold dollar is all that great and wonderful, but it's, it's a real blade. And these are much better than gold dollar. I started off doing gold dollars and then found these and decided I like these a lot better. I thought they'd resell, but people don't want to buy anything that doesn't say uh, made in America or made in Germany or you know one of those famous places which is a shame because they're, they're really good blades like I said I, I would compare it as good as my Dovo or some other razors that I have As you can see, we got metal being cut. It's, it's uh, as you can see, it's getting gray. That means it's got metal in that slurry. Because all of them start off milky white. Now, if we were to test this now, we can go back on the hair test and uh, 
<laughs> you see, it's just easily shaving my arm. I don't know if I get. I'll pull some hairs out of my head. Ooh. I'll use a piece of paper. I'll show you how well it cuts with a piece of paper shortly. Like I said, I don't, I don't have any good hairs that, that really do the hanging hair test with. Not sure what Jay uses, but I don't have anything. Ah. paper now for you just so you can see how easily it cuts paper I'm also gonna put a little more slurry back on here because after I cut something I, I want to put it the edge back like it was so I'm gonna put just a little more coma back on this on this uh, stone piece of paper I'll be right back I'm gonna dry this blade off real real good before we do the paper test. All right, now just there we have a piece of paper, and we're just gonna put this blade on there. As you can see, with ease. This is getting cut. That is not a problem. This blade is very sharp and should tackle your facial hairs with zero trouble. I can shave my whole arm with it, no problem. One thing I always run out of arm hair to test with. <laughs> All right. All right, we're going to clean this back off. We're going to put the blade back like it was with this extra slurry, and we're going to call this a done job as far as as far as the stones go, because we're 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 done. This 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 edge is ready to go. It's good and sharp. Just call it there. That should be back like it was. We're going to clean the stone off and clean my area off. Get rid of the paper. Now I have these little alcohol wipes right here. I use to uh, clean any remnants of the Sharpie off of the blade, which I'm going to go ahead and do that now. You can just use straight alcohol if you don't have a wet wipe. It does a good job. It takes all the Sharpie right off, as you can see. And I'm going to go ahead and 
take my layer of tape off because we're done. I'll get rid of all that mess here shortly. What I'm gonna do now is we're gonna look at this blade underneath the microscope and see what it looks like. We can confirm how the edge is with that. And here's a USB microscope with a monitor on it. Uh, all right, got a monitor that connects to it. I like that. It lets me look at the blade, as you can see. If you want to look at the edge, you have to tilt it up just a little bit, but we're gonna we're gonna look at this whole thing and make sure we don't have any bad spots. Well, I can see there's some particles on it. Let me get that off. Alright, so we're starting. There's the heel of the blade right there. And we're gonna go all the way down. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. Oops. All right, I'm gonna hold this up in just a second here. I wanna make sure that you guys can see the blade. Cause we're sitting at you, you might not be able to see the blade. All right, so here's the heel. down this edge looking for any uh, chips or anything like that that might cause it to be a problem you see all the uh, scratch marks are nice and even and looking looking beautiful Yeah, uh, no problems that I, that I can see. It looks it looks wonderful. All right, folks, that's the end of uh, a Nagura progression. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Uh, I hope I did a good job with this. I'm not a professional video maker, uh, but that's what we got. Thanks so much for viewing.